one of the most powerful weapon systems in the world, the Minuteman III nuclear missile. is an intercontinental ballistic missile, or ICBM. It has never been launched in war, only in tests like this. Each missile carries a warhead with 20 times the explosive power of the Hiroshima bomb. The military considers this ultimate weapon to be the last line of defense. Granted, the Cold War is over, but there are still a lot of rogue nations out there, and we have to always be prepared because all it takes is one sleeping moment, and we're not here anymore. Captain Ivan Visalu is among an elite group of officers known as missileers, men and women who truly have their fingers on the button. The fate of a lot of lives hang in the balance of one weapon system. It's an extremely powerful weapon system. The missile system is strategically located across the Northern Plains states. It's one of America's most closely guarded secrets. But we've been granted access inside the training facility, where the missileers prepare for nuclear war. F.E. Warren Air Force Base, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Move! Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Gallegos. 0800, Colonel Frank Gallegos, the commander of the 90th Operations Group, sits in on the briefing of his missileers. Uh, you get a to talk. The officers are warned of possible threats to the 20 launch centers and 150 missiles under the control of this operations group. Everything we do is highlighted all the way up to the President of the United States. And it's a tough job but we don't make any excuses for this tough job. We do it, and we do it with dedication, and we do it every day. A missileer's life is one of constant scrutiny. Personal problems such as divorce or financial trouble could cause them to be pulled from duty until a military physician deems them emotionally stable. In fact, just getting the initial security clearance right. and means having military investigators explore every aspect of your life. I got calls from people in my hometown when they were doing my investigation asking me what was going on because the, the investigators were actually going door to door and, and asking people, you know, if they knew things about me and then they thoroughly investigate each of those things. So it's, it's a thorough process, it's a lengthy process, it's, it's an expensive process, but it's something that's absolutely essential so that we know that the right people have access to this kind of information. Here on the base of F.E. Warren, missileers undergo rigorous preparation for the moment they hope will never come. In this training room, which is modeled after an actual launch capsule, Captain Besselou and First Lieutenant Andrew Dries simulate a number of scenarios, including the worst case scenario. Once they receive a launch order, the missileers open a lockbox containing the top secret launch codes and missile keys. Next, they strap themselves into their chairs in case of a nuclear counterattack. Finally, the missileers turn the launch switches in tandem. and the missiles are fired. When the order comes down, these officers must act immediately without hesitation, and so they practice over and over again. I may have to kill, you know, possibly millions of people. Um, and it's something I take to heart, it's something I think a lot, a lot about, um, but, you know, some I've accepted. Because that's what I've been trying to do. I'm part of the nation's defense. And if I couldn't turn keys, I shouldn't be here. Of course, this is only a training facility. But get ready, because the military has given us unprecedented authorization to take our cameras inside a real launch capsule. 
we are led to the outskirts of Dix, Nebraska. Heavily armed Air Force security forces and a barbed wire fence appear to guard little more than a couple of ranch houses. But don't be fooled by appearances. For security reasons, our cameras are not allowed to reveal the secret elevator that lowers us 70 feet below ground. This is where Lieutenant Colonel Bruce Hollywood opens the first of two blast doors, which weighs a whopping four tons. That's the first line of protection because it protects the equipment over here and it protects the people inside the capsule. But wait, we're still not there yet. There's a second blast door. This one weighs eight tons and can only be opened from within. This is the final and absolute last line of security. If someone defeated all of our security forces, all the additional security forces that would respond, and they got down here, they couldn't get through the next eight ton blast door because it's eight tons of reinforced steel and concrete. Stepping past the second blast door, we travel down a dark and narrow passageway leading to the launch capsule. Not surprisingly, it looks exactly like the training room we saw earlier, although getting into this one is much more difficult. You guys went through it, yeah, it's intense. I mean, you have to belong down here to be able to get down here. The capsule is home and office for Lieutenants Harris and White for 24 hours at a time. Sometimes it's claustrophobic. Sometimes it's sometimes it's boring. Most times when we're down here, we're feast or famine. You can have a whole 24-hour alert go by, and the only thing that happens is it snows, and now you're out here for 48. The officers also monitor any breach of security at the missile silos, which are five miles away. We are not permitted to disclose the exact locations of the missiles. But 550 of them are spread out in silos across five northern plain states. From the outside, the silos may look deserted, but this sign spells out the cold reality for would-be trespassers. Under heavy guard, we are given rare access inside. This is the launcher closure door and uh, it's sitting on top of the missile. And it weighs about 200 tons of uh, steel reinforced concrete. Looking around, we are surprised to find no security cameras or armed guards patrolling the silo. Just a single white pole. Incredibly, it's a motion detector, sensitive enough to perceive the slightest movement within hundreds of feet. And it'll give the, the capsule crew uh, notice remotely of any intruder or anything that's going on on this site so that if someone was to come onto the site or even if an animal was to get onto the site uh, that will detect the motion and uh, will set off alarm should the alarm sound security forces would mobilize and descend upon the missile silo from huey helicopters and armored vehicles and for good reason what they're protecting is the deadliest most destructive weapon known to mankind Ever since there's been an ICBM force, there's been a tremendous emphasis on security because we understand uh, that as a nation, we could never afford to lose one of these weapons or we could never allow for someone to take one of these weapons. In order for us to see inside the silo, two airmen must first open this safe with an electronic combination, which they work in unison. This allows them to turn a crank and open the silo's 2,700-pound hatch door. Once inside, we get our first glimpse of the Minuteman III nuclear missile. It stands nearly 60 feet tall, weighs almost 80,000 pounds, and costs $7 million. With a top speed of 15,000 miles an hour, he could reach the former Soviet Union in less than 20 minutes. The men and women who 
control these massive weapons of destruction pray the day never comes that they have to launch the missiles. The people that operate missile systems are, are very much the, the unsung heroes of, of America. There's no ticker tape parade when these guys go back home after a day or after three days. It's not a, a sexy, it's not a glamorous job. We just go out and we do the job every day.